Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to analyze Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSM. So as usual, I'm going to look at their financial statements, look at their valuation, use an intrinsic valuation model, and ultimately try and decide whether it's a good deal right now. As always, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, it really helps the channel out. All right, let's get started. Here we have Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing's website. We can see the development of their semiconductors. They're on the five nanometer currently, so they're really up to speed on the technology in this area. And you can see a variety of products they offer here. Here is TSM stock. You can see it's up about 126% over the past year. If we zoom out to a 10 year window, it's gone up 873%. So pretty incredible performance, especially lately. Now it's currently trading at about 29 times earnings. It has a dividend yield of close to one and a half percent. And the market is valuing it at about $557 billion. Is that a fair valuation? Well, you know, roughly 30 times earnings. If they're not growing earnings, it's definitely going to be a bad deal. But I hear they are growing. So let's dig into it. Let's see if it's a good deal. Something worth noting when I look through their annual report, they have two very large customers. One customer accounts for 12% of their revenue. The other customer accounts for 25%. Now, interestingly, they do not disclose the identities of these customers. They are required to do so. They are violating an SEC rule here. Uh, but that is just something to note. They are dependent on a few big customers. Here's some information from Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing's balance sheet. I see they have a liabilities to assets ratio of about 33%. Of those liabilities, not a lot are debt. You can see that with the debt to assets ratio being just 9.3%. So they're very under leveraged right now. And I like to see that. They have pretty good liquidity ratios, a current ratio of close to 1.8, meaning their current assets are about 1.77 times their current liabilities. No issues with paying those debts off. And quick ratio about one and a half, pretty good there. 29% of their assets are just plain cash. So this company can pay off those debts anytime they feel like it. And about 60% of their assets are long-term assets. So very good balance sheet. I give it an A. Here we have a DuPont analysis. I made a tutorial video on that. You can see it in the description below. All we're really doing here is looking at return on equity. A very important measure for us that tells us how much net income did you generate for every dollar of equity that us, the stockholders, gave you. Very important, right? And we're just going to break it down into its three parts here. And I also have return on invested capital just for your information. So what I see here is a pretty strong ROE. It's, you know, ranges from 21 to 34 percent depending on the year. It appears to be trending upward this past year. I like to see that. Let's have a look at the components. Net income margin tells you for every dollar of sales you had, what percentage did you end up keeping as profit? And for this company, they have very good margins. It looks to be, you know, just about 35%, 38.7 most recently. Pretty darn strong there. So this company is obviously able to charge a premium for their products. That tells me they have high quality products and gives them a competitive advantage. 
asset turnover tells us for every dollar of assets in place, how many dollars in sales did you generate? Uh, for Taiwan Semiconductor, it's not that great. It's not horrible, but you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, an average of 0.56. So for every dollar of assets, they generate about 56 cents in sales. Would like to see that number improve, but it's kind of artificially, you know, driven down by the, you know, incredible amount of cash on their balance sheet. Remember, about close to 30% of their assets are cash right now. And finally, you got equity multiplier. They are under levered, so their ROE could easily, you know, increase, probably double if they would just lever up a little bit. So based on this DuPont analysis, I really like their business. This company has a pretty good dividend streak going. You can see they are paying about 22 cents per share in 2016. That has increased to 36 cents per share in 2020. Doesn't seem like much but that is more than a 50% increase. Here's some information on that dividend. It has a payout ratio of about 44%. So they're only giving you 44% of their profits as a dividend. They have some room to grow that dividend. It has a five-year growth rate of about 7.4%. Pretty solid. So here is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company's revenues over time. So you can see they've really grown very impressive growth there from about $17 billion in revenues in 2012 all the way up to close to $48 billion most recently. If you're enjoying the content so far, don't forget to hit that like button. really helps support the channel. Thank you. This growth in revenues has translated into a growth in profits. And especially in the past year, you can see profits going from, you know, just about 11 and a half billion all the way up to 18 and a half billion. And you can see their margins over time. I got gross margin in blue, operating margin in red here. So I like to look at operating margin and, you know, that's been fairly steady but you know, increasing slightly over time. I love to see that it bumped up to about 42% in the most recent year. Now going forward, here's what analysts are expecting from TSM. For next year, their revenues are supposed to grow by about 16%. The following year, we're looking at about 15% growth, then going to close to 18 and after those three years, it's pretty hard to say. We only have two analysts forecasting for 2024 and 2025. But at least for the next three years, people are expecting pretty solid growth numbers. All right, guys, I really do like this company. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing has incredible margins, very solid growth, really excellent company. The question is, is it a good deal right now? And to really help us figure that out, we're going to use an intrinsic valuation model, to try and come up with a fair value for their stock. I'll be using the free cash flow to equity model. To make the model work, I need to estimate a discount rate. I will show you guys what the value would be depending on, you know, what kind of discount rate I use. Some of you guys have a higher required rate of return than others. So we'll show you the value under different scenarios there. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to walk you guys through the spreadsheet and show you exactly what I'm assuming. If you don't care, of course, you can skip ahead and, you know, just see the value. But I like to be fully transparent. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so here's what we're looking at. I've gone ahead and plugged in the analyst forecasted estimated growth rate and revenues here in this column. Going up to year three, after that, we don't really have many estimates. 
I will be somewhat conservative, not super conservative, but I'm just going to assume that growth slows down to 10%, then to 8% for a while, and then all the way down to 6%. Anyhow, that gives us a stream of revenue. So revenue was $47 billion last year. And if this forecast is accurate, it will grow to about $125 billion in year 10. Now, what are the margins going to be? Well, most recently, they were 38.7%. But if we take a multi-year average, it's more like 35.4%. So I'm going to go with that and be a bit more conservative there. So I got the revenues times that margin. That gives me net income. Uh, one final step, because we are equity investors, we're going to subtract reinvestment needs. Now, this company's reinvestment rate is going to be a little bit higher early on as they're growing at a higher rate. But after those first few years, I will assume the reinvestment rate drops down. Now, if this is true, you end up with some pretty heavy reinvestment numbers you know, $6.8 billion, close to $8 billion next year after that. But, you know, in looking at their reinvestments for the past 10 years, I think this is reasonable. Anyhow, if that is true, that gives us a stream of free cash flows. So given those cash flows, let's figure out what the company's worth. All right, guys, so we have our stream of cash flows here. As you can see, we're going to compute a terminal value that's going to be equal to the cash flows in that 11th year divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. I will assume they can grow their cash flows after 10 years at just about 2.5% per year. So if that is true, we have a total firm value consisting of cash on hand, the present value of the cash flows over the next 10 years, in the present value of the terminal value. So you add them all up, you get a fair value. Now, as you can see from the chart here, the total value varies depending on the discount rate you choose. So some of you guys might want a 10% return. That's gonna lower the price you should be willing to pay for the stock. Okay, if you want 10% return, it's only worth $363 billion. If you are okay with a 7% return, the company is worth almost $623 billion. So you can see it more clearly in this color-coded chart here. Under a 7% discount rate, the stock is currently undervalued by about 10%. But if you go with a higher rate, it's going to be overvalued. Alright guys, here are my final thoughts on Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSM. So, hands down, it's a really good company. I mean, they have an A balance sheet. Very safe. They also have an outstanding business. I love to see companies with margins that high. To me, that indicates a moat. They have some power in the marketplace. Of course, the big question, is it a good deal right now? It really depends on you. I mean, when I do the analysis, I can tell you, you're probably not going to get a double digit return with this stock. So if that's what you're looking for, it's probably not going to do it for you. They would have to exceed expectations, you know, which is pretty hard to do. A lot of these companies have pretty high expectations as it is. But that being said, I think it's a fine investment for a lot of you guys. I mean, 7% required return, that seems pretty fair when you see, look at how safe their balance sheet is, you look at how solid their business is, you know, so I think it's fine, I think, you know, anybody that wants to buy it, I, I would say, you know, I understand that for sure. What am I going to do? I may buy some, honestly, it looks pretty good to me. But honestly, the market does seem high right now, I might wait and see if it comes down a little bit. So we'll see. Those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about TSM in the comments below. 
As always, thank you for watching.